Hey everyone, welcome back to Neuropod. In this episode, I'll talk about how Neuralink implants will unlock superhuman abilities. I recently read an article on Max Hodak's website titled, What is Your Ideal Body? This article got me thinking about how Neuralink will unlock tons of different technologies that Neuralink or other companies could build to work alongside Neuralink implants. Neuralink is primarily working on brain machine interface technology to help patients with brain disorders. These advancements will be comparable, but much better than the current uses of deep brain stimulation or DBS technology. This tech is not new, but the advancements that Neuralink aspires to achieve will make many people call them medical breakthroughs rather than just medical advancements. To help provide some context, I want to include a clip from the University of Alabama at Birmingham School of Medicine. The video discusses patients receiving one or two electrode implants with invasive deep brain stimulation surgery. You can see for this patient with Parkinson's disease how dramatic the reduction in shaking or tremors is after just one or two electrode implants. The brain electrode is connected to a wire leading to a neurostimulator placed under the skin just below the collarbone. The stimulator works like a pacemaker, modulating the brain activity to suppress the tremor. The patient is awake during the surgery. It's very important to keep the patient awake so we can see the effects of our stimulation. The neurostimulator can be adjusted with a radio signal. Remarkably, patients go home the next day after surgery. One of the misconceptions they have is that it's experimental. It's not. It's, it's a well-documented procedure with low risk. Dr. Harrison Walker demonstrates how when the stimulator is turned off, the tremors return. And back on again, Benny's tremors are gone. Benny says he felt no pain during the surgery and is thrilled with the care he received at UAB. Open the hands wide as you can. Now open and close, big and fast as you can. Good. From the very beginning to the pre-op, to the actual operation itself, I feel loved, cared about, concerned that everything gonna be all right, Benny, and it was. Keep in mind, this result is life-changing with fewer than 10 electrodes. By comparison, in a paper released by the Neuralink team more than a year ago, they already discussed implanting a few thousand electrodes. It wouldn't surprise me if sometime this year, they share successful reading and writing of electric signals to and from the brain with more than 10,000 electrodes. Because of the precise data Neuralink will get with their brain machine interface technology, we should expect the ability to send information to and from each other and to other sensors for processing. For example, bats use a type of sonar called echolocation to determine the location of themselves relative to other objects. They emit a sound and wait to hear it bounce back to them. And the little kid in me thinks that this is pretty cool. For reference, bats can hear around 1 kilohertz to 200 kilohertz. Humans, by comparison, are 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. And so you can tell that there's a little overlap between the two. However, if we had a brain machine interface paired with an auditory sensor, it'd be also possible for us to use echolocation. It'd literally be possible for us to have superhuman hearing. Then expand on this thinking in the context of smelling things or seeing things. Max Hodak writes in his article, quote, if you could look like anything, no, really anything, what would you choose? I'm not talking about aesthetics, but what sensory faculties and motor capabilities you'd have. Like, would you have legs? Would you be lighter than air? Use powered flight to get around? End quote. These are questions we'll likely be able to ask and answer within the next two decades. And two decades may sound like a really long time. It is, but these technologies will unlock a lot within most of our lifetimes. It'd be sweet to have a heightened sense of smell or increased visual acuity. Max goes on to write about this by saying, quote, I spent a lot of time thinking about this and have come to the conclusion that the sensory faculty I'd most want to alter is my vision. It would be very interesting to go from passive stereo color vision to a 360 degree bubble of active hyperspectral vision. Our eyes extract color information from the world through, for most people, three types of cone cells in the retina that are sensitive to different wavelengths of light. This sends a three-dimensional representation of color information for a point in the retinal image down the optic nerve, 
This is why we can represent our color space in terms of red, green, blue, or RGB. End quote. I believe the most potential for all this will come in the form of an entirely new platform. Once these pieces are flushed out, or even before, people can start manufacturing a variety of sensors to then pair with Neuralink implants. Similarly, many of those sensors will need corresponding apps. Therefore, welcome to the Neuralink Development Kit and App Store. Right now, the way we interface with our phones is extremely slow. The input is typically our two thumbs typing letters. Fortunately, voice functionality is growing slightly, so we can speak words. The output is a little bit better. Sometimes it's text, but it's usually audio in the form of a podcast or video in the form of a YouTube video or Netflix series. A Neuralink brain machine interface will enable us to seamlessly send and receive these types of information between our brains and computers. The merging of man and machine is growing more and more apparent as humans continue to spend countless hours with their phones. So now, step back to 2008-ish and think about the entire Google or Apple App Store and platform being built entirely from scratch, but instead for Neuralink. I expect in some ways that's what will happen. One application will be to connect Neuralinks to prosthetic limbs and other various sensors. This is specifically what will allow humans to have superhuman capabilities. Just imagine the possibilities for how many new sensors and applications will be built for this entire system. Neuralink is prime for growth. In my opinion, they'll probably be focused on curing brain disorders for the next seven to 10 years or so. And being able to focus on this mission is absolutely incredible. In my personal opinion, it's a little bit more of an important and valuable mission than even Tesla or SpaceX's. If you haven't already subscribed, I highly recommend doing so because my hope is to come out with another premium episode pretty soon. The last episode on Company X with thinking about Elon combining Tesla, SpaceX, Neuralink, and The Boring Company all together into one company that was a Neuropod premium episode. In those episodes, I expect to spend around 50% more time creating the content and having help editing the video. For those of you who are curious, it's usually about one hour per minute of quote unquote normal content. So for those, it's one and a half hours per minute of content. I'll denote those premium episodes with a slightly different YouTube thumbnail image showing a bright, light yellow border around the outside. Please do me a favor and whenever you see one of those come out, make sure to watch it and then if you enjoy it, be a little bit more generous in making sure to share those episodes and help us grow the channel. Also, lastly, thanks to Joel, Adam, and James who have joined Chris in supporting on Patreon. I really appreciate everybody's support and I look forward to talking with you guys soon. Thanks and see y'all at the next episode.